What's going on, everybody? Welcome back. FantasyTeamAdvisors.com bringing them the bacon NFL DFS video. It's Thursday night football. Thursday, Thursday, Thursday. We have a fantastic matchup. We've got the Vikings visiting the Rams. We've got Cooper Cup back. He is back since week two. It's the first time. We are here to break down Thursday Night Football for you. If you have not been to this channel before, welcome to the channel. We've got a ton of information for you. The website is fantasyteamadvisors.com. You can check us out. $10 for a week. $30 for a month. $200 for a year. If you use the promo code NBA is back under the FTA Plus tab for the yearly pass, instead of paying $199, you're going to pay $74.99. That is an entire year of every single sport. The entire season of MLB next year. The rest of this NASCAR season and pretty much all of the next NASCAR. You've got this entire NBA season. You've got the rest of the NFL season in the first half of next year. We've got PGA and MMA as well. So what we're going to do is if you're new to the channel, welcome to the channel. If you could watch this entire video and click on the ads, that helps. If you could watch this video multiple times in the background, that also helps the channel. But what we're going to do is we're going to go over some statistics from last year to this year of how to build these lineups. We are also going to give you some of the insights. We are then going to build lineups for you as well. We might even hit a couple of uh, bets at the end of this video. So stick around. Make sure you've got your paper pen, notepad, whatever you're taking, your AI assistant. Let's break it down. As always, these videos are sponsored by Outlier.bet. The link to sign up is down below. If you sign up for the normal pass after a seven-day free trial, we're going to give you a th free month of FTA+. Plus. If you sign up for the pro package from them, we are going to give you three months free, which is a $90 value. So all of these insights you can find on our Discord, which is down below. But I want to go into the games. I want to dig in a little bit. I want to look at this. So obviously, Minnesota is 5-1. Uh, the Rams are two and four. For, for whatever reason, in my mind, this feels like a trap. I don't know why, but I feel like the the Rams are going to win this game. But as you can see, you can check all the insights down here. Check up the matchup summary, the record versus common opponents, team rankings, so on and so forth for offense and defense. You can also look at injuries. You can also look at insights for this game. You can even dig in to player props as well. So what we're going to do is we are going to look at this. So currently... Minnesota is a three-point favorite, an over-under 48.5, which is a great high over-under of what we're looking for in a game like this because we don't get, normally we don't get a lot of these on Thursday Night Football. We get some stinkers out there. Last week was pretty good if you were on the Broncos. Saints, not so much. I think this could be a shootout. I absolutely love Cooper Cup this week. All right, so what we're going to do is we are going to look at the showdown. We are going to see Puka. He's still out. Injuries there. McCarthy obviously out. Other than that, we should be pretty good. Higby still out. Whittington has now been ruled out, which is going to bump up Colby Parkinson a little bit. Cooper Cup obviously makes a lot of sense. But here is why you are here. Let's break down some of the tips and tricks through the first seven weeks of this year and all of the data from last year. So looking at the data from last year, 84% of the winning lineups contain at least one of the quarterbacks. I think we got to get both of those quarterbacks in this when we build throughout here. 6% of the winning lineups use the entire $50,000 salary. So 94% of the time, you do not need to use all of the salaries. That's a common misconception that a lot of people think they have to use because it's there. Same thing with normal full main slate. You do not need to use the entire salary. 16% of the lineups, the winning lineups, had a $200 player or less. Now, if we look at the flex and we look at these players, there's not a ton that you could look at that have even contributed whatsoever in these games. Maybe a little bit of Trent Sherfield Jr. or Sr. Um, that's probably it. CJ Ham is there, but, you know, something has to happen there for that to, to progress a little bit more. 80% of the winning lineups had a $4,000 player or less, which I think we're going to be able to see. We're going to see uh, Rams defense and down. Uh, so... We could see that, and there's some there, like Demarcus Robinson, um, Johnny Munt. Like, we could use some of these guys. Average uh, winning lineup had a salary of 47500 on DraftKings. And then the big thing is stacks. So there's three different stacks to do. 5-1, 4-2, and 3-3. Three, three. The overall winning stack this year, uh, so far, 4-2 stack has been 44% of the time. 
three three stack is 36 percent of the time and then five one stack is 21 percent of the time so like last week with if you had a five one stack of denver broncos most likely you won that game so uh keep that in mind so excuse me keep that in mind when you're building out uh so we look at captain percentages the majority of captains people love to do the quarterback but actually 39 percent of the time a wide receiver was in that captain spot and won that game i think that happens tonight with cooper cup running backs 28 percent of the time quarterback 17 tight ends seven percent of the time defense seven percent of the time and kickers two percent of the time so if you saw monday night football uh what dicker the kicker uh had six field goals i think so he was like jake moody in week one um absolutely dominated i don't think we're going to see that in this game but again an injury here and, and that could happen so that is definitely a thought that you need to have so after we have that background there building out i think it's time we look at having a build we're going to build a few lineups here and then at the end we are going to give you some of the props that we're going to use outlier for those said props so i think number one and i don't think it's a surprise i want cooper cup in my captain spot um i think a lot of people are gonna be a justin jefferson but i love cooper cup here because and here's the big reason because when we look at this, Minnesota is ranked dead last against the opposing wide receivers. They give up an average of 46.5 fantasy points per game, which is huge. Uh, if we look, put that in perspective here, um, the Lions give up 45, so they're right behind them. The Ravens give up 44.1. So if you look down to the Rams, and we look at the Los Angeles Rams, they are ranked 15th. They give up 31.2 fantasy points, so they are in between. But Justin Jefferson still obviously is pretty much matchup proof. So that's neither here nor there. Now, we've got to get Cup. We've got to get him a guy to throw it to him. It's obviously Stafford. Okay. I think we can get both quarterbacks in here. So I think we got Sam Darnold there. I think Sam Darnold obviously um, needs to throw to somebody. I think it's going to be instead of Jefferson because it's going to be hard to get him in there. I think Jordan Addison makes a lot of sense. Jordan Addison makes a lot of sense. Now we're at two spots left. We've got 4,050 in here. Now, I like the Rams defense. They are one of those spots where it's under 4K. It allows us to go a different direction here. Now, this is just one lineup. Now, where do we want to go? Do we want to go to Tutu Atwell? Do we want to go to Tyson Chandler? Um, I think I'm going to go Atwell because he's still averaging 9.5, and Minnesota's defense give up so many points to the opposing wide receiver. Now, this is a 4-2 stack. And as we said, a 4-2 stack won it 44% of the time. Now, <clears throat> this is one where, let's say Minnesota, they think Minnesota's going to win. They're up big. I want to stack the Rams in this one. So I'm going to, this is one line of construction that I want to have with Cooper Cup leading the way as our captain spot. But we're still going to build more. We're still going to hopefully have some success here. Um, in a game where I think we could. Now, my question is, is Hawkinson back? He is questionable. Um, Reigns Reserve. Yeah, so he could make a season debut. I did hear a lot of things about him making his debut. He still needs to be added depending on when you watch this game. So that scares me a little bit to put him in there um, building out. So we do have Cooper Cup there as the uh, captain spot first off. Now, let's go a sneaky direction and we're able to add a lot but let's put our captain here 2-2 two, two at well now again everyone on their mom is going including me are going to be on cooper cup at the top but let's put 2-2 two, two there we could still get cooper in there we could still get both of the quarterbacks in there so now we're at 7100 the rest of the way i think parkinson makes a lot of sense so if we look at Colby Parkinson, he's 4,400. If we use our matchup tool, which we have on the website, with Parkinson, a tight end against Minnesota. Minnesota against the tight ends this year. They rank 19th. They give up an average of 11.7. Whereas the Rams are ranked uh, 31st. They give up 16.3. So that is why if TJ Hawkinson is in there, I love TJ Hawkinson. Um, if he is in there and he's healthy and he's going to play, he's not like limited. He's in a great 
spot there. So I'm very excited to see what we got. Now we're at 9,900 left on the table. We could go Aaron Jones. We could go Jordan Addison. We can go in those directions. We can go Josh Naylor. But I think I want to get Aaron Jones in there because I still think they're going to be up. I still think it's going to be a, a thing where we still have four Rams. We have two uh, Minnesota guys. I think we're pretty good to go there. So that's a second lineup that I wanted to build. Now, if we look at this, uh, running back 28% of the time was in the captain spot as the winner. So let's, for instance, say it's Kyron Williams here. Now, if we look at Minnesota against the run this year, according to our matchup tool, Minnesota against the run, they rank 10th, 20.8 fantasy points. If we look at the Rams against the run, they rank 22nd, 25.6. So we could look at Aaron Jones, who has a technically a better matchup there in the spot, at the captain spot, here. So we've got Aaron Jones... I still want Cooper Cup. I want Stafford and Darno. I think I think you've got to have both quarterbacks in this matchup here. Now, this is where it gets a little bit crazy because we're at 3,100 the rest of the way. Um, if we are looking for a, a cheaper option here, Bilal Powell here, or Brandon Powell, sorry, um, did not have a reception or carry last week, so this one's a little bit weary. He has not done anything in three weeks, so that's kind of scary for me. So I might not be able to go that way. Um, just depending. So be careful when you look at that. You do have CJ Ham, who again, he does have a touchdown. He could barrel his way through. You know, it is possible. Where does touchdown come? Oh, against the Jets. He had two carries for 10 yards and one. So he could barrel his way in there. So let's put CJ Ham in there. Now we're at 5,800, uh, which you could go to uh, one of the kickers. You could. Hawkinson, if he's in there, if he is accepted, I do like Hawk in there as well. I said Hawk, by the way. So that is that. So those are just some ways to build your lineup out. If you have any questions, let me know. Uh, we have a cheat sheet on the website under the NFL tab. So go to NFL. Um, go to the cheat sheet. We do have Thursday Night Football cheat sheet. Uh, captains that we like. Flex options uh, that we like as well for both FanDuel and DraftKings. Now, what I wanted to do is look at some of the bets in these games. So we're going to use Outlier. We're going to build it, and we're going to add it to our bet slip, and then we're going to show you that you can click your bet slip. It takes you directly out to DraftKings Sportsbook, FanDuel Sportsbook, or whichever sportsbook your heart desires. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down to Props, and we're going to look at them. So, looking over the statistics, Justin Jefferson has scored a touchdown in five of six games this season and gets a very, very good matchup here. The Rams have allowed seven touchdowns to wide receivers, which is the sixth most out of the entire NFL. Um, Jefferson has also gone for 100 plus yards in three of three games against the Rams. He's also minus 138 to score this week. So, if we were to look at that, Jefferson... We look into Jefferson. We look into touchdown. You can see it had the line has moved now, depending on what you're at. Minus 115. So he's minus 115 to score a touchdown. But I want to look at yards as well. So what I love is once you get into whichever prop you're looking at and you've got the guy, it's going to show you all of the statistics that he has. So receiving yards. So you can see 192 yards against Detroit in January. This year, though, his his current line is over 84 and a half. So if you wanted to go to alt lines and go to uh, 100, that's plus 170. He has not hit over 100 in his last four games. But if you look at the matchup tool for wide receivers and you look at the Rams, they give up an average of 31.2 fantasy points per game. Um, they have given up 300 plus yard games this year to opposing wide receivers i like this one here i would take the 84 and a half but i kind of like justin jefferson over 100 plus yards in this one so i'm going to add that to my bet so that is one player prop using the same guy now in the same realm 
Matthew Stafford hasn't hasn't put up the passing yards that we expect him to put up. Okay, um, his passing yards right now. Let's see what Stafford's passing yards are. So let's just click into here and we'll go to passing yards. His line is at 238 and a half. He does get Cooper Cup back. They are dead last against the wide receiver. The Vikings give up second most yards to quarterbacks, 285 yards per game. I like this line here of 238. I think I'm going to take more than that. I think I'm going to take a minimum. I'm going to take 274 and a half. If you look at this, he has not hit that the past few games this season, but he has hit it a couple one time this year at 317. So if you want to bring it down a little bit, you want to go two you want instead of 274, you want to go 250. You can see he did that two games ago. I like this matchup here. I'm adding that to my pick there. Now let's get to the two running backs that everybody's going to be on. Aaron Jones, number one. Got a great matchup here. He's covered longest rushing yard. So his longest rushing is 14 and a half. He's hit that four of six games with 19, 39, 17, and 34. Five running backs against the Rams this year have had a 14 and a half, an over longest 14 and a half. He's the number eighth running back in explosive yards gained this season. I like this one over 14 and a half rushing yards. The on on DraftKings it's minus 130, on BetMGM it's minus 125, and on uh, Underdog it's minus 120. So what I'm going to do is I am going to take add this to my picks at minus 120 combined. Next one we're going to look at Kyron Williams. I don't know why I didn't just type Kyron because he's the only Kyron in the league, I believe. So we look at this. He's he leads the NFL in red zone attempts at 31, which is a huge number. He scored a touchdown in every game and has nine of them this year. The Vikings have been good against the run, but Jameer Gibbs last week scored twice against them. Now, David Montgomery obviously being out, but I like this matchup here. So what we look at, um, this is where I'm looking at. Rushing touchdown, um, you can't take it there. Or over a one touchdown. So just not just rushing, but over at minus 180 or minus 225 on DraftKings. I'm still going to take this. I don't know if I will take this as a single bet, but in a parlay, same game parlay, I will take this one as well. Now, this one's a big if, but TJ Hawkinson, if he is back, he's got a fantastic matchup. Um, they are very bad against the tight end. They allow the third most... Uh, Yards to tight ends this year, giving up an average of 67.8 yards per game. Now, we do not have a line on him completely, but if we were to look at him, they have moved the line, depending on where you're at. Um, over 24 and a half receiving yards, you can find this on DraftKings. I think he comes back. You can see if he is in this game, he is in a great matchup here. I like this. If he is in, the line is out now, over 24 and a half. I'm adding Hawkinson in there as well. So if you look at the picks, that's six picks here. On DraftKings, you can do six of six. If you want to take this, I'm going to add it to the bet slip, which will take us out to DraftKings Sportsbook. And then I will pause the video so I can log in because I obviously do not want you guys to see my login details. So I will be right back. Okay, so I've logged in. For whatever reason, I cannot get the Aaron Jones longest run of over 14 and a half in a same game parlay on DraftKings anyway. I don't know why. So I've updated it a little bit. So I've got Matt Stafford, 250 plus passing yards. I've got Justin Jefferson scoring a touchdown. I've got Kyron Williams scoring a touchdown. I've switched it to Aaron Jones, 40 plus rushing yards. Justin Jefferson, 70 plus rushing yards. TJ Hawkinson, 40 plus rushing yards as well. So what we have is there is a bonus for this bet or for this week. Um, Thursday night football, same game parlay, 33% bonus. So what is at 1900? I add this, it's at 25.27. It's a $20 top bet that I can do. I'm gonna do 10. I'm gonna do a $10 bet on this one. This is one you can follow. If you have not already signed up to DraftKings or uh, FanDuel, I will put the links down below because if you sign up using our link for the sports book, I think they're gonna give you an upwards match of $250 on top of whatever that you've, uh, a, you're gonna get a 
the bonuses. Um, those were at the beginning of the season. I still think they are there if you have not already signed up. So those links will be down below as well. And I'm going to place this bet here and hopefully we all bring home the bacon. So that is a Thursday Night Football breakdown. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure you check out all of our other content. I will post it here at the end of the video. We've ranked out all the positions, over 300 players for week eight so far. We have the NBA video for today. Uh, this weekend, be on the lookout Saturday for the NFL main slate breakdown, which we break it down and we build lineups as well. So I'm going to build a lineup on DraftKings and FanDuel for you for the main slate. So make sure you check out that video. It's a little bit longer, but it's more in depth. And we use SaberSim and we show you how to uh, simulate some of the games and build some lineups out there as well for the main slate. So that's what I've got for Thursday Night Football. Good luck. And as always, let's bring up some bacon. Peace.